Hi, Grade 8s. Uh, welcome to the start of Algebra 3. So what we've done in this year so far is we started off with Algebra 1. We then did Integers. Then we did Algebra 2, which incorporated integers into everything that you'd learnt. Then we did Exponents. And so finally, Algebra 3, you're not going to learn a single new concept. All we're going to be doing is bringing exponents into everything you've done so far. So there are three main topics, so I'm hoping that you're treating this like a normal lesson, that you have written the heading Algebra 3, and then there's three subheadings. Subheading number one is adding and subtracting like terms. Then we're going to go on to subheading number two, which is um, distribution, and then subheading number three, which is going to be um, order of work. So we're starting with adding and subtracting like terms. Don't forget that you need to treat this exactly like a lesson. So all these examples, all the questions, all the notes that we write down, you must write down into your workbook, and then I'm going to give you some classwork to finish off the lesson with. So topic one, adding and subtracting like terms. Let's just quickly remind ourselves, we've done this before, what does like terms mean? Now, in Algebra 1, we learned what like terms meant, and like terms in Algebra 1 meant terms that had exactly the same variable. So x's and x's. So terms that had exactly the same variable. Now, in Algebra 1, we, de we dealt with absolutely no exponents. And so we could say to you that like terms are terms that have exactly the same variables. But now we've dealt with exponents. And so we need to add on an extra thing. And an extra thing is and those variables have to have the same exponent. So it's not enough just to have the same variables, you have to have the same exponent. Now we've never had that concept before because we've been avoiding exponents. And so now we're adding that in. So let's have a look here. If we have 4a plus 5a minus 6a, so hopefully you've written example number one, simplify, and here is a. 4a plus 5a minus 6a. Now the first thing to very importantly notice, remember when we did the Smarties, if you have four purple Smarties and you buy five purple Smarties, then you eat six purple Smarties, do we agree that whatever your answer is, it's a certain number of purple Smarties? You don't change the exponent. And now that we've done exponents, people get quite excited to make this a squared or a cubed or something. Just remember, when we add or subtract like terms, we do not change the exponents. So when we add or subtract like terms, like terms, we do not change the exponents. We only ever change exponents when we're multiplying or dividing. So just remember your Smarties all the time. Adding and subtracting are like Smarties. Your Smarties are still purple Smarties at the end. So all I'm doing is I'm adding up the coefficients. Remember, and if we don't like integers, we can always use our calculator. But this is fairly easy because 4 plus 5 is 9, and 9 minus 6 is 3. So I'm left with 3 A's. Right, on to the next one. Now, this is slightly different, and we've never seen this before because now I'm working with x squared. But you'll notice if I scroll up, this is exactly the same question. Because if you have a look, it's 4a, 4x squared, plus 5a, plus 5x squared minus 6a minus 6x squared. Now I've deliberately done that so that you can be okay with the fact that this, now that I have exponents in the mix, it doesn't change a thing. I'm still adding and subtracting like terms and because I'm adding and subtracting like terms, these will still remain purple Smarties. So I have four, four purple Smarties, I add five purple Smarties which gives me nine purple Smarties, I eat six purple Smarties and I'm left with three purple Smarties. So please, very important note, no change to the exponent. So we've never had this problem before because we've been avoiding exponents. And so don't let the fact that we've now done exponents confuse us. No change to the exponent. Okay, let's try another one. 5a cubed, take away 3a cubed minus 7a cubed. I don't know how many things I have, but I have something a cubed because I do not change my exponent. So if I have 5 and I take away 3, that'll get me to negative 2a cubed. Now I'm taking away another 7, that'll get me to negative 9. 
a cubed. Now don't forget that you can use your calculator to help you with the coefficients, especially if you just want to check if you're not confident with integers. But don't forget that these still remain a cubed. So those first three questions were just to get us used to the fact that we're never changing our exponents and things are only like terms if they have the same letter and the same exponents. So let's have a look at D. Question D says 10a minus 4b plus 2a minus b. So you'll notice there are different types of like terms here, but now this is the type of question that we would have done in Algebra 1. So my like terms are 10a plus 2a will give me 12a, not a squared because I'm adding and subtracting like terms. I'm not multiplying. And then minus 4b, take away another, 1b is minus 5b. Don't forget to use the calculator if you're concerned. So if we understood in Algebra 1 that a terms are only like with a terms and b are only like with b terms, what is it like when you have exponents? Well, it's exactly the same. a squared terms are only like terms with other a squared terms. So just because they have the same letter does not mean they are like terms. You have to have the same letter and the same exponent. So just remember that like terms means same variable and same exponent. So that's a new thing for us because we've been avoiding it. So a's are not like terms with a squareds. So a squareds are only like terms with a squareds. So in this case, I had minus 4a squared plus 1a squared is minus 3a squareds. And then I had minus 6a minus 2a is minus 8a. Notice the a term still stayed a, the a squared term still stayed a squared. So you just have to keep concentrating because sometimes we do get tempted to introduce exponents into this and start making things a to the power of 4. Now I can't simplify those two because while they have the same variables, they do not have the same exponents and so they're not like terms. Okay, let's try some more. This question has x squareds, which will be like terms with x squareds. It'll also have x's, which are like terms with x's. So if I have a look, 10x squared plus 2x squared is 12x squared. My exponent didn't change. Minus 4x, take away x, minus 5x. And those are not like terms with each other. So those were a couple of examples of where you have a squared and an x squared and an x where they're not like terms. Let's make our, our um, variables a little bit more complicated. So this is a minus 3x squared term. Now it'll only be like with other, sorry did I say minus 3x squared, minus 3x squared y's. That'll only be a like term with other minus, so or plus, x squared y's. So where are the other x squared y's? There's an x squared y, so that is another like term. The next term is an x y squared. Now that's different because the x isn't being squared, the y is being squared. So that is a like term with other x y squareds. And then finally, this is an x y term. Now that'll only be like with other x y terms and there aren't any other x, y terms. So now I know, and you can rearrange this if you want to. You don't have to write this line. I'm just writing this line in this question because it's a little bit more complicated. There's my x squared y terms. They will be like terms because they have exactly the same variables with exactly the same exponents. These are the x, y squared terms, x, y squared. And then finally, the x, y actually has no like terms to deal with here. Now lots of people will see all of these and go, oh they all have x's and y's in each term, so they're all like, but just be careful, same variable with same exponent. So minus 3 plus 2 is actually minus 1, so I can either write minus 1 or I can just write minus x squared y. Then my orange terms, 5 take away 10 is minus 5 and that's an x y squared term. And then my last one had no like terms. So I deliberately made that with lots of x's and y's and squares just so that we can concentrate on the fact that they have to be identical. Okay, let's have a look. Now this one's a little bit more complicated as is i simply because if I have a look at this, what is my first step the moment things aren't looking particularly simplified? My first step 
is to divide into terms. So every single question that you're going to do, divide into terms. Now, why didn't I divide uh, G into terms? I could have, but all the terms were already simplified. So I just had to add like terms, whereas I can clearly see here that these terms are not simplified. So there are one, two, three, four terms here. So divide into terms. Second step, simplify each term. I can't even look for like and unlike terms yet because they're not simplified. So let's do that step. This I am multiplying. There's no distribution there because there's only one thing in the bracket. So that's just multiply. And don't forget when you multiply or divide, it's signs, numbers, variables. So 2 times 3 is 6 and x times x. Now that's not adding. That's x times x. And x times x is written as x squared. On to the next one. This guy is minus, it's minus, 2 times 2 is 4, and this is x times y, which is xy. This one again is minus, 4 times 2 is 8, and x times x is x squared, so I know I and I have some like terms. And my last term is actually simplified, it's plus 5xy. So I've got x squared terms, x squared terms, and I've also got x, y terms. So I can rearrange this and rewrite it. I'm just going to use my color to show me the like terms. Um, 6x squared minus 8x squared is minus 2x squared. And minus 4xy plus 5xy. It actually might be easier for me to think of it as plus 5xy take away 4xy is plus xy. Great. On to the next one. Oh, wait, I actually forgot a step there. Um, you'll notice I said divide into terms, simplify each term, and then I forgot my last, last step, which is add like terms, which is what we've been doing this whole time, which is why I didn't think of it. Right, on to the next one. Again, I noticed that these terms don't look particularly simplified. So divide into terms. Now, simplify each term. So if I look at my first, signs and numbers variables, well, there's no signs to contend with. 3 times 2 is 6. x squared times y, nothing to do, just x squared y. Next term, oh, I've got some signs here, a negative and a negative, positive. 4 times 2 is 8. x, x, y. So x times x will be x squared and then the y. Now, what do you know? They both actually like terms. There's no other things to contend with here. These are both x squared y's and 6 plus 8 is 14 and they're x squared y's. You don't change the exponents now because you're adding them. So notice when I said x times x I changed the exponent because I was multiplying and x times x is x squared. But when I add these together I'm no longer multiplying. I'm just adding apples and apples and so my variables don't change. They're just a label. Right, on to J, which I think is the last one. J says, now do I need to divide into terms? Well, I could, but all of those terms look simplified. So I basically just need to identify my like terms. So 12 is a number, which I can only add with other numbers. Then I've got some A squared terms. So A squareds, I can add with A squareds. And then I can add A's with A's. And so, oh, sorry, I'm jumping around. Sorry, I was jumping around there. And there's my A terms. So this is actually an easy question compared to the ones we've been doing. So 12 take away 10 is 2. A squared take away 2A squared is minus 1A squared, which I can write as minus A squared. And then it might be easier for me to think of this as 10 take away 5 is 5, and that's 5 A's. Great. So that's a lot of examples. What have we basically learned here? We've learned that like terms are only like terms if they have the same variable and the same exponent. And we've learned that when you add these like terms, you don't change those labels. So if it's an x squared y term, it always remains an x squared y term. And then we learned that when the question gets a little bit complicated, the same thing we've always been doing in algebra, divide into terms, simplify each term, and add like terms. Right, so you're ready to do your classwork now. Now this exercise I'm going to add as a, a PDF into the Google Classroom for this lesson. So you can either print it out or you can actually just copy these down into your 
workbooks but these are the questions that you need to do and then you can mark them right don't forget to ask questions i'm going to put up a, me a typed memo for this don't forget to ask questions if you come across any that you don't understand well done